Welcome to Reyes Power International. Well, it's summer 2018 and it is hot. We're, we're having a heat wave here in the Midwest. That's why I don't have a shirt on. I know people have gotten upset with me before for not wearing a shirt, but uh, bear with me, it's hot. Today I want to talk about creatinine. The title of today's video is a little bit long. All these years you may not have been taking enough creatinine. Wow! This is some new information I stumbled across and I'm in the process of actually experimenting with the dosages. So bear with me, but I wanted to get the word out and let everybody know what the latest science is. Now, back in 1993, my gym, Reyes Power and Fitness Center in Pekin, Illinois, was one of the very first gyms to use creatine monohydrate in the form of EAS phosphagen, okay? Now my my supplement distributor begged me to try this stuff and you know we have been scammed since the early mid 80s uh, by all these steroid replacers so once again I didn't believe there was anything out there that could replace steroids but I relented and I tried it and by gosh it worked, okay? So you know the results were amazing this I mean this is something that really lived up to all the hype now I've stayed on that now in the form of Creapure from Germany under the Optimum brand name all these years no kidney problems no you know liver problems or whatever now let's talk about the new science the recommended dosing protocol for phosphagen was to load the product for five days at 20 grams per day and then continue on a maintenance dose of five to ten grams per day indefinitely to maintain strength. Now researchers believed that the loading phase raised muscle creatine content by 35 to 40 percent but as it turned out the initial protocol had merely been guesswork on the part of those researchers. It was known that an average non-active 150 pound male used two grams of creatine each day just to maintain normal cellular levels of creatine. Your body needs creatine whether you lift or not. However, in 2003, more advanced research methods determined that after two weeks of dosing at five to ten grams per day, the intracellular creatine levels return to baseline. Yet no one could argue that the phosphagen was giving them results. We now know that the average human stores around one gram of creatine per pound of muscle. Now the maximum amount of creatine that can be stored inside muscle is believed to be three grams per pound of muscle. So a 150 pound male would need 25 grams of creatine per day to maintain this level of saturation. To increase the creatine level above baseline, which is one gram per pound of muscle, two grams of creatine would be required for maintenance, plus 0.4 grams for every pound of muscle. So a 200 pound male that would be carrying, say, 60 pounds of lean muscle would need 27.3 grams of creatine each day, which is 0.4 grams times 60 pounds and then there's a division of 0.95 plus the 2 grams for maintenance which gives us 27.3 grams. The division by 0.95 is an estimate that one researcher did to take into account the fact that creatine is absorbed by other body tissue. So this is very precise. Now a more simplified formula would be your body weight times 0.15 and that in this case with a 200 pound uh, lifter would give us 30 grams of creatine. It's just like 27.3 rounded off. So there's, there's no question that the old, old protocol did pr produce results. But this new data suggests that the results were not optimum. Unfortunately for liability reasons I cannot recommend that anyone ingest more than the recommended dosage. What's on the label? I can only provide this published data, but I can tell you that continued research and experimentation on your part is what will set you apart from the average lifter. This is what makes you a champion, so 
keep an open mind. 